So far, we check the .out file for any warnings and errors. Provided, the analysis was completed successfully, we are now on our way to view modeling results with Hyperview. As we are using HyperWorks Desktop, there is no need to start up a separate tool for post-processing. Just split the current window and activate the Hyperview client. By the way, the desktop framework is explained in the starter kit video about the graphical user interface. Please note, that in the new window the Hyperview client is already active. As you already know, the active window is surrounded by a cyan colored frame. Of course, we still need to load the modeling result as both check boxes next to load model and load results are active. It is sufficient just to specify the model file. The model data and the results data are contained within the H3D file. To add mesh information to the display, just activate the corresponding and let's view displacement results. If you are interested in the components of the displacements, click on the selector. Don't forget to click on the apply button. In order to improve visibility of the results, we are enlarging the current window. Finally, we arrive at the desired displacement contour plot. Now your brain and engineering knowledge are tested. For sure, always check the legend carefully. What are the maximum and minimum values? Do the values make sense? What are the units of the shown displacement? Would a displacement of, for instance 143 be reasonable? Do the displacements justify our assumption of a linear, small displacement analysis? What about the constraints? Is the model really behaving according to our expectations? As you can see, there are many questions to think about. In order to better understand the results, the displacements will be scaled by a factor of 20. The scaling of the displacements will only affect its graphical representation. Note, we are not changing the real magnitudes of the displacements, as you can see in the legend. A very helpful way to investigate whether the constraints act in a proper way is to create an animation. After the animation has been started, you can control the animation speed by adjusting the slider bar accordingly. Unfortunately, the animation is available as an animated GIF only. This animation provides a kind of general understanding of how the model behaves due to the applied forces and constraints. In general the model seems to react in the way we expected it to. Bending of the tip in Z direction, whereas the flange part, which is virtually mounted to a wall, does not move. Let's zoom in the highlighted area by using the control key in combination with the mouse wheel. We then will view the displacements of the nodes at the hole. Again, the animation is recorded as a GIF file. Remember, we constrain the node of the rigid element at the centroid of the hole. Its translational displacements are set to zero. Did you expect to see the nodes surrounding the hole moving so freely? Now we are zooming into the highlighted area on the left side of the bracket. You may remember, we constrained the node at the centroid as well as with respect to its rotational degrees of freedom. What do you think, will it make a difference? As stated before, the node of the rigid element at the centroid of the hole is fixed with respect to all its degrees of freedom. It becomes apparent now, that fixing the rotational degrees of freedom as well, significantly affects the model behavior. Impressive, isn't it? Hence, always be careful regarding your modeling assumptions, as they have a strong impact on the system behavior. Always keep this in mind. In the following step, we review the MISA stresses. Remember, the geometry as well as the applied loads are symmetrical. However, the stress contour plot is not symmetrical. Again, this may be another indication that something in the model is, I put it in quotes, wrong. 
This is something you should think about. This ends our video on post processing. For further reading and training exercises, please view the tutorials available in the help menu. Also, don't forget the starter kit manual, which also contains information about this very topic.